여보세요? 본인이 전화기에 중독되어 있다고 생각하시나요? 그렇다면 왜인가요? 네, 저는 전화기에 중독되어 있다고 생각합니다. 왜냐하면 은 저랑 같이 사는 룸메이트가 계속 저한테 전화기 좀 그만 보라는 말을 종종 했었고 저 역시도 계속 전화기를 붙잡고 있는 저의 모습을 확인할 수 있기 때문에 그렇게 생각합니다. 하루에 일반적으로 한 7시간에서 8시간 정도는 합쳐서 쓰는 것 같습니다. It's addictive. It is. It's, it's addictive. 이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이
but the way it's set up with, with the likes and the stars and the hearts, um, you get like instant validation. So you say something and it's out there and people are like, oh, I like that. I like that. And do you like this little... They've, they've, I think, I believe somebody studied this where your brain responds a little bit like it does with like a regular addiction. So if you're an alcoholic, the brain pattern you get when you have that first drink, or um, when if you if you're a smoker when you take a puff of your cigarette, the dopamine system gets involved and the dopamine neurons react the same way with social media as to other behaviors that are considered addictive. Being able to see someone like that side of someone they're not seeing the whole person they're seeing what that person presents so they see someone as like uh perfect or um yeah just like a perfect person that they want to strive to be and it might affect their self-esteem where they question why am i not perfect like them why am i not good at all these different things if you're on instagram and your friends are all like there's all these you know pictures of the kids you go to school with, the people that you think should be in your social group, and they're all having fun and you're not there, makes you feel bad. I think that people a lot of times are more inclined to stay in because they can still have that connection from a distance because of technology, whereas before, the way that you would connect with people is to go and see them face to face. You gotta kinda have two pieces of it. One piece is the increased screen time, but it's the, if you're on your screen, you're not socializing. So it's not just that you're on your screen, but it's the lack of socialization. So a piece of that is that they're not hanging out with people. They're in their room on their phone. Instead of like going out with their friends, they're in the room on their phone. And actually, um, they do this survey every year. And in the last year that they did the survey, 12th graders were going out with their friends at the rate that eighth graders were five years before. It's like kids like aren't going out and hanging out with their friends. They're sitting in their room looking at social media. People are sleeping with their cell phones and they're not getting enough sleep. And that when you don't get enough sleep, your ability to regulate your emotions falls apart. So you're know, like when little kids get overtired, they cry a lot. Um, that may be one piece of what's going on. Another piece of what may be going on is cyberbullying. So with cyberbullying, it's unique in that it follows the student outside the school. Um, it impacts them in every aspect of their life. They can't just go home and shut it off. Um, because of how reliant um, kids are on technology, they'll, f they'll still want to check their phones, they'll still look at their text messages. Um, so it, it follows them and it has a level of permanence. Also, it kind of, it can come with a level of anonymity. Um, where they don't necessarily know who is creating the conflict, who is um, perpetrating or uh, being the cyber bully. So that adds another aspect of stress that adds more, um, I guess, negative emotions. Um, also with that, it becomes publicized for the whole world. So that conflict online, now anyone can see it. Um, it could be posted to a Facebook or some kind of like social media website, Twitter, whatever people use. And for one, it makes it very difficult to get off um, to the person who is being um, bullied can go back and reread it, relive the experience, re-see it. Um, other people could witness it. It's no longer just in that instance. Now it's got that permanence. Um, that often leads to like depression, loneliness, um, it could lower self-esteem, um, it could increase like suicidal ideation. 
first of all, it's for fun. So if it's making you unhappy, stop. Or change how you do it. Technology is a huge aspect in current society. Um, it has a huge, or it has a very significant role in many different aspects of life. Um, people rely on it for school, for work, for social life, um, even like just hanging out with people. Um, people like will play, do online gaming so they can hang out and just like, well, not in the same room. Um, that whole keeping in contact with people, all that is done through media, through technology. So it has such a huge role in everyone's life. 전화기를 사용하지 않는 시간은 저는 굉장히 많은 것을 할수 있다고 생각합니다. 예를 들어 어, 휴식을 취한다든지 아니면 은 다른 사람들과 대화를 한다든지 어, 전화기를 이용하는 것이 무조건 나쁜 것은 아니지만 전화기를 이용한 것보다 더 유익한 시간을 보낼 수 있다고 생각합니다. I guess, I think it's important that people choose happiness. Like you always have a choice. So do things that are affirming and not disaffirming. And if you're finding that your social media is like making you unhappy, change it. Don't follow those people. Like just make different choices. Put it down. Just to be mindful with the amount they use it. Um, make sure they recognize the benefits as well as the negatives. Um, that way they don't become too reliant I would encourage someone who hasn't been able to live without technology to go a week without their cell phone and see how different of a lifestyle that is and see the possibility that is, uh, the possibility that you don't have to completely rely on like your cell phone um, while understanding that there is a place for technology so you still do need like computers to do homework and research and um, work with your job, emails, all that. So. I would just encourage people to view both sides of it and try and um, live for a short period of time without it to see how it impacts their life. 모든 사람들이 전화기를 바라보는 대신 다른 사람들과 더 많은 소통을 하는 것이 저는 더 바람직하다고 보고 그렇게 되셨으면 좋겠습니다.